Hi friends, Devang here. Welcome to my last session of uh, EIS revision. EIS that is your second group CA intermediate subject. Um, we revised chapter number 3 in lecture 1. We revised uh, chapter number 4 in lecture 2. Then we did chapter 1, chapter 2 and now the last chapter, chapter number 5 is what we now revise. Chapter 5 is about core banking systems. <coughs> so, Again, I remind you chapter one that we had done was about the automated business processes, meaning chapter one was regarding examples of softwares that are used in business softwares that are used to automate processes in your business. Well, chapter two and this chapter five, both are examples of chapter number one. Now, if both of these are examples of chapter number one, meaning both these chapters are regarding uh, examples of softwares that are actually used in the businesses these are softwares that are used in business like in chapter 2 we did accounting softwares that are used in business ERP softwares also that are used in business chapter 5 is about banking softwares that are used in banking companies for banking business now so this chapter is about software that is used in banking company well the software that is used in banking company it is called as core banking system CBS in shorter words I will call but this CBS software yes it is used by the banking companies for their banking functions but before we learn what the CBS software does we need to learn what the bank does so my first thing over here under introduction was about certain banking services banking services here was a list of services that a bank provides well banks do not have business processes like purchase process sales process etc rather in a banking company your business processes are different this time i will not say purchase and sales as my processes this time banking company will have processes like this mainly banking companies will accept deposits and give advances give loans apart from that bank are also into remittances remittances involves payment payments in the form of say demand draft payment by demand draft or telegraphic transfers or electronic fund transfer like ATM transfers, ATM machine cash withdrawals and all and digital payments. Also new methods of remittances like RTGS, NEFT, IMPS. These are all net banking money transfer methods. All that is done by the banking softwares plus banking softwares also perform collections. Collection like a collection in the form of the check collections like you deposit check in your bank account bank will collect money on your behalf and put it in your account that is collections on behalf of customer they also provide cash collection services yes clearing clearing is a process in by which a check will be deposited in your account and the money will credit in your account well clearing process happens through an entity of the bank called clearing house and the clearing house is nowadays doing the clearing process electronically called as electronic clearance system in fact the entire clearing system is also now automated automated because of MICR magnetic ink character recognition micro check it is called micro instruments this is basically a type of specialized ink with which with this specialized magnetic ink they write a number below the check and the clearing house will segregate the check using a scanner micro scanner this scanner can recognize the ink that is written with the magnetic ink in short basically clearing house is the entity of the bank is the uh, branch of the bank which will collect all the checks that are deposited segregate the checks and send it to the respective issuing bank for clearing this entire process happens electronically this entire process is such that the check is scanned and the scanned copy is sent to the issuing bank well that scanned copy the scanning is done by the micro scanners yeah anyways that entire process i had explained when we had done that topic in a detail um, electronic clearance system is also automated directly by the CBS software in which uh, automatic debit of funds can happen automatic credit of funds can happen ECS credit ECS debit both examples we learned ECS credit is when there is a single receiver of funds for example you pay your light bill I pay my light bill all of us pay the light bills electronically not electronically as such I pay them but 
I have registered ECS system such that whenever my light bill is due, automatically the money is debited from my account and transferred to the electricity company. That becomes ECS credit. Similarly, ECS debit is when single account is to be debited. For example, payment of salaries, company account is debit and all the employee accounts are credited. Yeah. <clears throat> Letter of credit and guarantees. Letter of credit LC is given when uh, when an Indian entity wants to import goods from a foreign entity, but the foreign entity does not trust the Indian entity. So they will ask the bank to give a letter of credit. Letter of credit is like a guarantee, guarantee for the goods that I import, while guarantee itself is a guarantee for the loans that I take from outside India. Credit cards, debit cards are also part of banking services. Other banking services like these that also you can read. Anyways, based on that, now we understand what is the CBS, core banking system. Well, first I explain the full form of the word core. The word core stands for centralized online real-time environment. Centralized because this CBS software has made all the database of all the branches of the bank centralized. Meaning, if SBI is using CBS software, then data coming from every single branch of SBI goes into that same database, centralized database. Plus, online. Online indicates that CBS softwares are running 24 hours a day, 24-7. They are continuously operating real-time. Remember batch processing versus real time processing. Yes, that same comes over here saying that CBS softwares have the facility to do real time processing. Like whenever you enter the transaction, immediately the transaction can be processed. So these are the three main features that the CBS software provides. In fact, because of these features, all the branches of SBI has got connected. All the branches of SBI have got connected together such that no matter you do transaction from any of the branch, all the data goes to the same centralized database. You can do the transaction any time of the day, middle of the night, 24 seven. Yes, you can. And the processing can also happen immediately. The SBI, SBI server will process all the transactions immediately. That is real time processing. These are the main benefits of CBS. In fact, because of the CBS software, there is one important line given in your book. I'll show you because of the CBS software, a customer is not just customer of the bank, not just the customer of the branch. Rather, he has become customer of the entire bank. For example, earlier before the CBS, if I have my bank account with SBI Mumbai branch, then I am a customer of only that Mumbai branch or whatever things I want. I have to go to that Mumbai branch. But now because of CBS, all the branches of SBI are connected due to which now whenever I need any banking services, I can get my services from any branch of SBI from any branch of SBI throughout the country. So now I don't need to be specifically going only to that Mumbai branch. I am not the customer of only Mumbai branch of SBI. I am customer of any branch of SBI. Any branch of SBI can help me with my work. Yeah. <clears throat> So um, CBS characteristics of CBS you'll see that here there's a common database and there's a central server yes all the database is common at one place the server is also common at one place branches function just as delivery channels because branches do not actually do any processing they will just be delivering things to the customer and getting things from the getting data from the customer the branches simply function as just delivery channels <coughs> Centralized banking software. Yes, all the work is now centralized. Customer is customer of the bank and not just customer of the branch that we discussed. CBS is a modular structure. Again, just like ERP softwares, CBS is also modular. It has various modules, various parts within that. Later in the chapter, we will learn some of the modules in CBS. CBS also enables integration of third party applications. Banking softwares might require integration with other company softwares, other softwares like say Google, Paytm and all, all these other softwares can also integrate with the CBS software so that they can have uh, the transactions between different softwares more easily. <coughs> Examples of CBS are given here that you can read. 
um, CBS has now become mandatory for all the banks in India. It is running 24 7 and it can process real time transactions. That is what we learned. Further, modules of the CBS, main parts of the CBS software. Well, there are four back end applications discussed here and four front end applications. Back end is what happens inside the server. Front end is where the customer is served. Yeah. So all the softwares that serve the customer comes in the front comes under front end and all the parts which uh, is done in the server which is for the internal working of the bank that comes under back end and both of them are connected with the central server so back office is the basic admin and support personnel is where the admin and support person are working they are not client facing data warehouse Yes, banking softwares will also have a data warehouse. You remember data warehouse where all the data is gathered together at one place so that reports are generated from this warehouse. Credit card system processes the credit card transactions. ATM will process the ATM transactions. Central server is the main server of the CBS which will connect all the modules together and this is where all the processing, centralized processing happens. This is where even the data storage happens. Yeah. All the bank branches access applications from the centralized data center, centralized servers. Therefore, any deposits made in any branch can reflect immediately. Yeah. Internet banking is banking through the internet customer service provided. Uh, mobile banking is providing services to the customer through the mobile phone. Phone banking is providing services to the customer from normal phone not smartphone even normal phone like say by making a call to the call center of the bank you can know your bank balance and all that is like phone banking many banks have this facility that uh, you can give a missed call on a particular number and they will message you your bank balance that is again a part of phone banking no internet needed for that <clears throat> but registration of mobile number in your bank account is one of the basic prerequisite for this purpose Branch banking means you go to the branch for all the services that you need. That is your branch banking. Um, next core features of CBS that you will read technology components. Okay. CBS IT environment is what I next revise. This topic is talking about various uh, technologies that are needed, various servers that are involved in the entire CBS network. Remember three tower architecture where I said that there is one database server and there is a separate application server. Well, in case of CBS environment, it is not just three tier. It is multi tier architecture because there are not just two servers as in application server and database server. Yes, these two are definitely there. Plus, there are other servers also, which I explained. I had explained in my diagram here. I will revise directly from the diagram here. Deko. Say if I'm talking about SBI core banking system, SBI CBS network. Now in case of SBI network, there is a database server of the SBI that is the main database of the SBI. There is an application server which contains all the applications. Sorry. Okay, once again, there is a database server of SBI which contains all the data. There is also an application server. There is also definitely an application server which contains the applications. Applications means softwares. It contains the CBS software as well as the other softwares whichever needed are also there in the application server. But apart from that, it also has a separate ATM server which handles ATM transactions. It has internet banking application server, which handles your internet banking transactions. Application server here provides service to the bank employee sitting at the bank branch, provides service to the branch employee sitting in the branch. ATM server provides services to the ATM user and internet banking application server provides service to the customer who is using internet banking. Yes. Acha. For each of them, there is also involved a channel server. Channel server is basically a specialized server which is required for authentication. For example, when the branch employee 
wants to access the application server definitely the server will ask the branch employee to enter his id password login id and password because anyone will not be allowed to access the server now whatever login id password he will enter channel server contains the database of all the id passwords that channel server contains database of all the id passwords such that whenever this guy will enter the id password channel server will have the database of id passwords so that application server here can check the password that you have typed with the passwords listed in the channel server yes once again application server will check will verify that whether the password you type is the same as the password mentioned in the channel server or not if yes then your entry will be allowed then your access will be allowed same thing is done by atm channel server it will contain the list of all the atm pin numbers so that whenever the atm user will type his pin number whenever this atm user will type his pin number <coughs> then the atm server will verify the pin number that you type with the pin numbers listed in the channel server and same way for internet banking also there is an internet banking channel server ibcs will contain id passwords of all the internet banking users yeah so the customer who is using internet banking will be accessing the database server through the internet banking application server in which channel server will also come in between and web server will also come in between what does web server do web server will contain the website internet banking website if you want to access sbi net banking you have to open sbi website you don't have any inbuilt software in your laptop you have to open the sbi website so that website is in the web server yeah so in short these are the different servers involved in the uh banking network in the cbs network plus there is also an antivirus server which will do the virus checking throughout all these different servers and plus there is also a proxy server this proxy server here proxy server is basically for connecting sbi network with other banking network proxy server can create network to network connections yes proxy server is mainly for accessing data from the database of other networks so if somebody is using sbi atm here with hdfc debit card atm card then sbi atm server will not send that data to sbi database rather sbi atm server will send that data to hdfc database so when you want when they want to access or give information to database of another network then proxy server is required in between for connecting one network with another network well these are all the different servers involved here this comes under cbs it environment going further internet banking process is one gatya topic that you will read literally gatya topic so i am not revising implementation of cbs <laughs> is basically stages involved when a company when a bank wants to implement a cbs well just the headings you see say if my bank wants to start using some particular cbs software there will be involved planning planning by the top management approval from the top management needed selection of the vendor because there are multiple vendors who are making cbs softwares you select that you want to purchase from which vendor design and develop or procure the cbs you either design and develop your own cbs or you procure ready made cbs that comes over here after that testing and implementation then comes testing the software implement the software maintenance maintenance is bug fixing or error fixing and all later after implementation if you need any support or if you need some changes that comes under maintenance support updation and auditing auditing of the software software audit is audit we have learned further cbs risk security policy and controls again risk and controls here cbs risk well in case of cbs what all risk might be involved in a cbs operational risk is basically the risk of routine operations it is the risk of loss to the bank there is a risk of loss to the bank due to any internal process people or systems loss to the bank because of any internal process people or systems people risk processing risk 
legal risk are the categories under that people risk is like the risk of having uh, our risk of having lack of trained employees you don't have enough trained employees in your company processing risk like say maybe the processing goes faulty or reports are wrong wrong reports are generated and all legal risk is the risk of uh, say a client suing the company or suing the bank for bad services to the client or bad treatment of the clients bad products sold to the client and all all that comes under operational risk credit risk is the risk that loan i have given but the loan now becomes irrecoverable loan becoming irrecoverable becomes my credit risk market risk is a risk of losses in the bank's trading book look banks are also doing investment in the share market and all risk of having losses in that share market is the market risk strategic risk is a risk that earnings will decline due to changing business environment okay compliance risk is the risk of exposure to legal penalties if banks will violate some provisions then the government will charge penalties on the bank and all that is compliance risk <coughs> compliance risk and it risk it risk is basically technology related risk now it risk one of the major risk is that the entire cbs software is completely dependent on the data center because it is a centralized data center my entire software is fully dependent on the data center if my entire software is fully dependent on this one data center then it is naturally a risk that if this data center has some problem then my entire data is at a uh, risk you need to give proper training to your employees so that they don't uh, cause damages in the system uh, sometimes banks can also go for outsourcing of the work to other uh, software companies who are expert in handling the softwares and all anyways some common it related it risks related to cbs are given over here risk number 1 it says ownership of data data resides in the data center you need to establish clear guidelines that who is considered owner of the data whether data center or the bank who is considered as the owner authorization process well anybody can enter the data anybody can enter data into the data centers directly well there has to be some authorization that who can enter which data authentication username passwords should also be there and username passwords might be still inadequate that is why <coughs> that is why banks have extra authentication like pin numbers and otps and all but still that is a risk that uh, it might still get leaked and all several software interfaces across diverse networks look one banking software might be having various other softwares interconnected it might have 75 to 100 different interface and application softwares it might have many different application softwares interconnected that makes it also a little risky maintaining response time can be challenging user identity management banking networks might have more than 5000 in fact 50000 more than crores of users in the software who are using the cbs at a time at once so that is also a risk access controls there should be very strong access controls in the banking networks yes because if my website gets hacked it's not a big problem if my any other website or any other Uh, accounting data gets hacked it's not a big problem but if my bank account gets hacked it is a direct financial impact on me yeah so there has to be very strong access controls in that incident handling procedures banks should have procedures that in case any bad incident happens in case there is a security breach then what is the procedure involved if my credit card is stolen what is the procedure they should have a clear procedure for that if my credit card gets stolen i give a call to the bank bank employee says that we don't know the procedure you wait for one day we'll tell you what is the procedure well then within that one day so much money might be used from my credit card that should not happen they should have a proper incident handling procedures change management whenever there is a new system to be implemented whenever there is a new system to be implemented then that new systems or new softwares are always initially rejected by the user you needed to convince the employees convince the users that the new system is good for you beneficial for you that convincing is called as change management yeah next security policy every bank should have their security policy policies there is policy is basically a framework 
for security framework that how will they ensure security how will they ensure security of the data security of the uh, private information about the customers that they have information security refers to ensure confidentiality integrity and availability of information we've done that earlier we called that as a cia confidentiality integrity and availability and within information security there are mentioned certain sub processes well this is just saying that what all things are involved in the security policy well information security information security are just a minute information security involves information security policies procedures and practices banks should have their own policies procedures regarding information security user security administration this is regarding define how the user accounts are created and granted access to the different parts of the software application security is about security of the software configurations and settings of the software database security is needed operating system security is to secure the operating system securing the operating system network security is for the network and physical security security of the physical devices that are used in the banking network anyways you are given some sample matlab example examples of risk and controls with respect to information security most of the points are repeated that i am not revising internal control system ics we have defined ics earlier same definition comes again over here that internal controls is to ensure internal control system is to ensure these five things that you might have learnt in your auditing subject also you had defined internal control system in auditing subject same thing comes over here internal control in banks involved are these points that in case of a banking company these things should be there as an internal control they should have separation of maker and checker process that is basically segregation of duties the one who makes a transaction will be different from the one who checks the transaction banking companies will always have a system of job rotation like if i am the cash manager of idbi bank i will not always be cash manager after a few months i will be given another work so that the job keeps on rotating because of job rotation any employee will never do fraud in that job um financial and admin powers of each official is fixed and communicated to all persons who is having what powers has to be communicated properly branch managers should send periodic confirmation on the compliance compliance reports they have to send all the books are balanced periodically yes uh, details of any security forms that are lost should be immediately given to the authorities fraud prone items like currency valuables are put in custody of at least two people these are different examples of internal controls in bank IT controls in banks which says that IT related what all controls should be there well they should record keep a log they should keep a just a moment yeah they should keep a record of all the logins and logouts into the system dormant accounts should be searched and should be probably say removed or taken care of because dormant account means inoperative account frauds might happen in that account check whether the amount withdrawn is within the drawing limit check whether the system flashes a message if the balance in the lien account lien matlab uh, the account against which you have taken a loan the security against which you have taken the loan if the security balance goes below if the security balance goes below the required amount then the system should create a message flash a message um access to the system is only stipulated only during the stipulated hours and days that might also be possible that uh, certain transactions are not allowed after a certain time access is given to the employees only on a need to know basis employee an employee will be given access only to the data that he needs to know he will not be given access to all the data that is access on need to know basis user timeout is also an example that uh, if the system remains on for a long time then after a certain time the user will be automatically logged out user is automatically log out you might have you might have experienced that while doing some net banking and all third part here is about application software um every banking software just like any other application software will also contain configurations masters and transactions 
here you are just given examples about configurations masters and transactions in a cbs software that examples you will see on your own one more is there reports cbs will also give you reports like these and then again risk and controls pertaining to application controls i'm not revising that was your self study next is details about certain core business processes next is some details about certain core business processes and the risk and controls in that well we said that uh, banking companies do not have processes like purchase process sales process rather banking companies will have different other kinds of processes here we have a list of certain processes that are involved in a banking company and risk and controls in those processes mainly we will be learning two things under each of that number one what is the process like what are the steps involved in that process and number two what are the risk and controls in them well in most of the topics here risk and controls are common similar in all the parts but the process involved might be different so i will be mainly focusing on the process flow while risk and controls are mostly repetition the first process we discuss here is current account savings account process this is the process of this is the process how i can open current account savings account in a bank well the process of getting a current account savings account opened well goes like this first step customer will approach the bank he will apply for the current account savings account charges are quoted rates are quoted to the customer kyc he has to file the kyc know your customer details he has to file credit team will verify his uh, details his documents and all and decide the credit worthiness of that customer based on his credit worthiness facilities are provided to that customer now based on that facilities are provided to the customer which facility current account or savings account facilities are provided once the facilities are given then he can avail other facilities like neft rtgs ecs and etc yeah anyways this is the stages involved in getting a current account savings account opened then risk and controls well the risk and controls which i discuss here almost same risk and controls will appear in many other parts of this chapter here so pay attention first one says credit line setup is unauthorized credit line over here refers to credit limit credit limit decided credit first risk is that the credit limit decided itself is wrong well for that matter the credit committee should check that why is this customer given this much credit limit second risk here says that credit limit setup in the cbs is unauthorized look there's a difference the first point says that credit limit decided itself is wrong while the second point here says that the credit limit mentioned in the cbs is wrong now if the credit limit decided itself is wrong then the credit team should check that why was the credit given to this guy more but if the credit limit decided was right while it was mentioned in the cbs wrong meaning you did not have a problem in the decision part your decision was correct but it was wrongly fed into the system and if it is wrongly fed into the system meaning there might have been an unauthorized access so for that access controls should be checked and you should check that the access is restricted only to the authorized people customer master is not in accordance customer master is not correct well access control should be there for that um inaccurate interest calculations might be there to prevent that interest calculation should be automated unauthorized approvals unauthorized approvals might be given in the system well for that segregation of duties should be there so that the person who initiates a transaction is different from the person who approves the transaction and inaccurate accounting entries might be generated well to prevent that accounting entries should be done automated by the cbs if you have to type the journal entry you might make a mistake but if the cbs will automatically do the journal entries it will be more correct anyways these are the risk and controls pertaining to current account savings account next is the credit card process under credit card three processes are given process of getting credit card issued process of getting credit card issued that is issuance process then uh, then the second one is the process of 
सेल ऑथोराइजेशन सेल्स ऑथोराइजेशन एंड द लास्ट वन इज द क्लियरिंग एंड सेटलमेंट प्रोसेस ऑल थ्री प्रोसेस वी विल लर्न देखो ओके आई शो दैट य First is the process of getting the credit card issuance. Issuance process is still the same. First step is that the customer will approach the bank saying that he wants a credit card. The bank will quote the charges and rates. They'll have to collect KYC details of the customer. Credit team will verify the details, verify the credit worthiness, and allot the credit card to that guy. And the credit card is then physically sent to the customer's address. This is the issuance process. Next. is the authorization sales authorization process this is the process how the credit card will be used step 1 you swipe the credit card at the pos machine point of sale machine the machine will authenticate your card and the pos machine will send authentication request to the merchant bank you go to the merchant swipe the card at that place then the merchant machine will send the details to the merchant bank merchant bank from the merchant bank it goes to the credit card network where it is validated by the issuing bank issuing bank is my bank so your bank you are the merchant your bank will send the transaction to the credit card network at the credit card network my bank will validate the transaction and after that approval message will appear on the pos machine and the pos machine will give a receipt that slip will come out of the machine i will be given bill at the end of the month yes this is the authorization or sales process i have shown the process in a shorter way over here this you might want to copy for revision so the process starts like this that from the point of sale machine pos machine the process starts from the pos machine the pos machine will send the data to the merchant bank which is say your bank your bank will send it to credit card network like visa or mastercard or so at this network issuing bank will approve the payment and accordingly the money gets transferred like this like this and the confirmation comes in the pos machine then confirmation slip will be generated in the pos machine during this transaction this is the authentication or authorization uh, process next is the clearing process clearing and settlement process goes like this well for the clearing and settlement process look again here in case of the clearing process this happens from the pos machine the transaction goes to the merchant bank your machine will send the transaction to your bank but at your bank your bank will create a batch of all these transactions they'll make a batch of all the transactions list of all the transactions the list of transactions is sent to the credit card network look now this diagram is not to check the authentication this diagram is to actually clear the payment and get the funding well authentication is done one by one for each transaction but funding is done in a batch method so when the transaction reaches the merchant bank your bank your bank will ask money from the at the credit card network by giving a list of all such transactions list meaning batch this credit card network at the credit card network issuing bank will see the list issuing bank will see the list at the credit card network and accordingly make payment issuing bank will then make payment to the credit card network payment reaches the merchant bank and from the merchant bank the payment reaches the merchant after all that is done then the issuing bank will ask his customer to make the payment in the form of the month end billing yes this is your clearance process so notice the sequence here first the merchant bank will make payment to the merchant then the issuing bank will make payment to the merchant bank and then customer is asked to make payment to the issuing bank that is a reverse cycle here this is your clearing and settlement process <clears throat> next risk and controls given here are almost the same as the previous topic one new point here is about this credit limit setup can be breached if i am given a credit card with a credit limit of say 2 lakhs can i use the credit card for value more than 2 lakhs well even if i use the transaction will be rejected because cbs software will restrict the transactions if the aggregate outstanding if the total outstanding exceeds the credit limit that is assigned that is done automatically by the cbs also risk 
of inaccurate reconciliations you saw that uh, the issuing bank needs to reconcile the payments done with the payments that are asked in the credit card network so credit card network will ask some payment issuing bank has to do the payment according to the information coming from the customer they need to reconcile there might be inaccurate reconciliations but for that matter they should do daily reconciliation of balances received from the credit card network with the transactions updated in the credit card system so <clears throat> SBI will do daily reconciliation of what payment the credit card network is demanding to uh, with the what payments that are done with my credit card. Yeah. <clears throat> In short, daily reconciliation should be done. That is my control factor here. Mortgage process is talking about mortgage loan. Three types of loan can be there. Home loan, top up loan or construction uh, loan. But the process described here is your self-study. The process described here is almost same as the credit card process and all. And the risk and controls are also almost the same things described as the credit card process. One new aspect here is like uh, incorrect customer and loan details are mentioned. If there are wrong details of the loan are mentioned, well, control measure should be that there should be a secondary review. Control measure is that there should be a secondary review. Secondary review means a separate team should verify the loan details before it is finalized. Incorrect loan disbursement. You are sanctioned a loan of say 1 crore but you are disbursed 1 crore 10 lakhs. Wrong disbursement. Again to prevent that there has to be a secondary review of the amount when it is before it is disbursed. Next one treasury process. Treasury is the department of the bank which handles investments investment bank will do investment in securities forex etc to manage liquidity look whatever money bank will get by deposits all the money they will not give out as loan some of the money they will use in investments so that they can handle some liquidity two types of activities will be involved in treasury some of the money they will put under investment some of the money they might put under trading Investment is like long term, trading is like short term. These are the places where the investments can happen. These are the sources where trading might happen. Core areas of the treasury operations. Well, banks treasury process will have areas like front office, middle office and back office. We'll have areas like front office, middle office and back office. Front office deals with the various corporates and interbank counterparties. Look. Treasury department never deals with customers like you and me. Treasury department will be dealing with corporate customers only. Front office is the part which deals with the corporate and interbank customers. Middle office is the one which does risk management, accounting work, documentation work, forecasting work and all. And back office operations. Back office operations is to support the front office. They will support the transactions done by the front office. Settlement of transactions is done here. Reconciliations of accounts is also done by the back office and all. Front back office can also recall the deals input in the front office. And all this is done automatically. Yeah. Now within the treasury process also we will learn certain risk and controls around the treasury process. Like these. They go. <clears throat> General points. Simple. Uh, General points here like unauthorized securities are set up, unauthorized shares are purchased and all. Well, for that, segregation of duties and review controls should be there so that unauthorized share purchases do not happen. Inaccurate trade. Uh, Treasury does not do only investment, it also does trading. Inaccurate trading is processed, then for that again, segregation of duties should be there. Unauthorized confirmations is a risk. <coughs> Uh, insufficient securities available for settlement many times they will need securities to settle the transaction they will need shares to settle the open positions in the markets and all but insufficient securities available or also insufficient funds available for settlement is a risk incomplete data flow between the systems is a risk these are risk pertaining to investments and trading done by the bank you just need to remember the keywords that i have given that will be enough Loan and trade finance process process is the same as the others we did and the risk and controls also not new that you will read. <clears throat> Next is a topic regarding risk prediction. 
by Basel for Basel 3. Well, there was a committee called as Basel Committee made by the government. They gave suggestions regarding risk prediction. They gave suggestions that risk prediction should be done by the bank and accordingly they should determine the capital adequacy norms based on the risk prediction. They said that risk prediction will be done using artificial intelligence softwares to understand the hidden trends and they said that you do analysis from the data transferred to the data warehouse. That was about risk prediction with Basel 3. And last part is regulatory and compliance requirements. Last part of the chapter is certain regulatory provisions under which you have first something about impact of IT in banking TK. But the main part here is about money laundering. What is money laundering? Money laundering is proceeds of crime that is made to appear as if it is coming from a legitimate source. It is basically to make the dirty money appear clean. Well, you remember our beloved ICAI, they have given you stages in money laundering. So meaning they are teaching you how to do money laundering. Three steps involved in money laundering. Just a minute. <clears throat> Jumping. Three steps involved in money laundering. Step one is placement. Sorry again. Three steps involved in money laundering. Step one is placement. Placement means that you place the money in a form which is less suspicious. Whatever money you get from criminal activities, you put it in a form that is less suspicious and more convenient. For example, deposit that in bank. Next step is layering. Layering involves that you separate the proceeds from the illegal source. You separate that this money came from this criminal activity. How do you separate that? Well, you do that by moving, by transferring the money through various different transactions. You send the money, sending the money through various financial transactions such that it becomes difficult to follow, difficult to track. It becomes almost impossible to track that money because you are moving it through so many transactions, through so many different bank accounts, through shell companies, offshore bank accounts or different countries and all so that ultimately, it will be difficult to track that where did this money go or once you have shifted it through various different uh, channels finally you bring it together at one place but by this time it will be difficult to, to track that where did this money actually come from that was basically layering ultimately it is about changing the money's uh, you can also change the money's currency or purchase high value items like boats and house and cars and all by which it will be difficult to track that where did this money actually came from and then last stage is integration integration is to bring that money back to you integration might be done by say converting that illegal proceeds into some legitimate business maybe by showing some fake invoices maybe by showing wrong export or by showing loan against a foreign deposit and all all that are the different ways how you bring that money back to you that is called as integration now these are the three stages involved why is the syllabus teaching you the three stages of money laundering well they're teaching you this not so that you do money laundering they're teaching you this so that you can understand the anti money laundering regulations yes there is an act called as anti money laundering prevention of money laundering act pmla act which is against which is having provisions to prevent money laundering like this <clears throat> So anti money laundering using technology can be done. You'll have certain provisions for that later. Cyber crime is just the definition that what is cyber crime, what is included in cyber crime. You can see that here. Banking Regulation Act, Negotiable Instruments Act, RBI Act are some of the acts that you might have already known and you'll just see some provisions there. I will be discussing only one act over here. Excuse me. I will be discussing only one act here called as the PMLA Act.
called the PMLA Act, which is Prevention of Money Laundering Act. This act contains provisions, provisions in order to check money laundering, prevent money laundering. Um, under that chapter 2, section 3. Under that chapter 2 section 3 is just defining what is money laundering. Offense of money laundering is any proceeds or activity connected with the 17 proceeds of crime. They have defined certain 17 proceeds, 17 criminal activities from which if you get money that will be called as money laundering. Obligations of banking companies like banking companies are supposed to do this. That is chapter 4. Under that obligations of banking companies, they have section 12 which is about reporting. They say that banking companies should do reporting about these things. Every reporting entity shall maintain a record of all transactions, all transactions to enable it to reconstruct individual transactions. They should maintain a record such that they can reconstruct. Reconstruct means they can see that where did this transaction start from. <clears throat> And they need to furnish to the director all the details of such transaction. Look, in all these points, the director that they say here is a director which is designated by the government. It is not appointed but designated. So in my bank, if there are say 10 directors in the board of directors, government will appoint that this director is responsible for money laundering. So whenever any money laundering things happen in the bank, the government will held will hold this director responsible. So this is the person who has to keep a track, who has to check that the bank does not get involved in money laundering. This person is the designated director. So as per the provisions, the bank should submit these records to the uh, designated director. <coughs> So they should submit to the director the such transactions whether attempted or executed etc. Um, plus they say that KYC details should be maintained with the bank also and these KYC details has to be maintained for 5 years. Look the data about a record of transactions is also maintained to be maintained for 5 years. KYC details should also be maintained for 5 years by the bank but 5 years since what? Well this was 5 years since the transaction. And this KYC should be maintained for five years since the relationship with that customer ended. So KYC details has to be maintained as long as you are the customer of the bank. Once I stop being customer of the bank, even after that up to five years, they have to maintain the KYC details. That are the provisions given here. Section 13 is about powers of that director to impose a fine. That designated director may make inquiry with regard to that designated director may make inquiry with regard to the obligations of the reporting entity he might also ask you to get the uh, records audited he might also ask the bank to get the records audited plus the expenses of that audit will be borne by the central government the act says and if the director finds that the entity has failed to comply with any of those things then he might give warning or he might give direct uh, he might give uh, directions to comply with the specific instructions or he might direct the entity to send to send reports whenever needed or finally if nothing works then he might also impose monetary penalty on that entity all these are the provisions here and then some other miscellaneous provisions uh, section 63 is punishment for false information or failure to give information if any person willfully and maliciously gives false information and so causing an arrest or search to be made if you give information to the government that Devang sir has a cupboard full of cash money laundering and the government or the police will come and arrest Devang sir eventually it is found that the information was wrong then because of your wrong information it caused arrest of me that is the point here if some person willfully and maliciously gives false information like that then you might be jailed for two years or 50,000 rupees fine or both <clears throat> if any person who is bound to state the truth refuses to answer then also or refuses to sign any statement made by him or uh, omits to attend or produce books of accounts whenever asked 
then fine 500 to 10,000 rupees might have to be paid. These are some provisions here. And as usual, opportunity of being heard will be given and he will also be penalized under the Indian Penal Code and all. And then section 70 is offenses by companies. Sorry for that. Section 70 is something about offenses by companies that uh, where the offense is done by a company, then who in the company will be held liable? When any of these offenses done by a company, then look at this, every person who at the time of the contravention was in charge was in charge of and was responsible to the company shall be deemed to be guilty. So in case any contravention is done by the company, then every person in charge will be deemed to be guilty. Of course, provided that if that contravention took place without his knowledge, then he will be excluded from that guiltiness. So when anything is done by a company with the consent of or neglect of the director, manager or secretary or any other officer, then that director, manager, secretary will be also deemed to be guilty. And then some definitions are given that you can read. Last one is an Information Technology Act, IT Act. Under the IT Act also certain provisions are there. We'll see some provisions here. IT Act contains provisions pertaining to bank. Some definitions are given. Definitions you will read. I'm not discussing. What does access mean? What does computer mean? Computer network mean? These are certain things that we have done throughout the syllabus. You have to read. And some key provisions under the IT Act. Section 43 is providing penalty and compensation for damage to computer, computer system. If any person without permission... If any, if any person without permission does just a moment it says that if any person without permission does any of these following things without permission does any of these following things under section 43 then he is then it is considered as an offense under the IT Act. And for that section 43, penalties are given under section 66. Penalties are given for that under section 66 that you can read. Also, um, they have given certain definitions of what is considered as computer contaminant, what is a virus, what is a computer source code. Most of that we have done earlier. Section 43A is also compensation for failure to protect data if the bank is supposed to protect my personal data and they are not able to protect then compensation has to be paid body corporate have, having sensitive personal data or information spdi remember we've done that and if that body corporate causes wrongful loss or wrongful gain to any person if if that causes wrongful loss or wrongful gain to any person because of personal data being leaked then they will be liable to pay damages to the person who is so affected. And then rest of these sections are about penalty provisions pertaining to various other things that you will read. Anyways, rest of the things are you are supposed to read yourself. So that completes my chapter 5 revision here. Chapter 5, in my opinion, is uh, having topics which are less important. More important in your syllabus was chapter 3 chapter 4 and chapter 1. Consider them to be more important chapters. Out of the 5 chapters in the syllabus, the chapters that I have taught in the sequence in which I have taught, that sequence is the sequence of importance. Yeah. Anyways, that's all with the revision. That's all from my side with the revision. All the best and study well. Thank you very much.